Okay, so this is the last fundamental problem for this block of material for chapter 17. And um, so let's get into it here. So we've got a rod, and this rod, they've drawn it kind of funny, but it's it's in there, and they've drawn it like it's at some angle. But see there, it, the second sentence, if the rod is released from rest at theta equals zero. So it's like right here, and they're letting it drop down. Determine the angular acceleration of the rod and the acceleration of the roller immediately after the release. Okay. So um, maybe like sort of from experience, you sort of might imagine that as this thing drops, that the position of the roller pin A is probably going to get drawn this way a little bit. Okay. Um, so we need to find that acceleration. <clears throat> So I want to start by actually drawing it in the initial position here, which is our, our point of interest. And in that position, we've got mg here, and then we've got some upward force A here, which we could think of as a tangential, um, or we could think of it as the y direction, either way. And then if it was rotating, we'd have some um force a a n there let me hang on i gotta read do that this guy i need capital a capital a t or capital a y doesn't really matter and but if it's tangential then i know this is my my normal this direction, or I could call it x, okay, um, positive x to the left. Okay, e either way, either way is fine. Okay. Um, All righty, so let's start with our equation up here. And so I'm going to call that, I want to consider it to be the y direction. Okay. And if we look at our vertical forces, what we're going to have is at minus mg, and that has to be equal to ma. Okay. So since there's no external force, I just gave it away. Uh, there's no horizontal forces acting on it. There can't be any... Um, lateral acceleration of the center of mass, okay. Um, but well, let me come back to that. Okay, so the issue that we've got here is we don't know AT and we don't know the acceleration of the center of mass, either one, okay. Uh, so what we can do is we can use our trick about instantaneous center and say that the um, acceleration of the center of mass is plus or minus alpha r, where r has to do with that instantaneous center, like so. Okay. Um, so if we can get alpha, then we can get a. If we can get a, we can get a t. All right. So let's look at the moments. Um, the only force that we have acting is we've got a minus mg and it's acting at half the length so i'm going to call that l over two and that's equal to oh we're going to we're going to pivot about a by the way just so we eliminate a the any forces at a um and so that's i a onto alpha okay um By the way, the moment of inertia at A is one third ML squared. Okay. So let's put all that together. We've got minus mg L over two is one third ML squared alpha. Okay, and uh, Kind of a cool thing uh, happened here. 
which is that the, the mass cancels. I mean, how many times have we seen that? We end up losing one of the L's just like that. And um, so what I end up having left is L alpha is equal to 3 over L G. So if we put some numbers on that, we got 3 over 0. 0.6 times 9.81. Hold on just a second. I got to double check something. I had one of those moments where I felt like, oh, I've, I've forgotten something. And I did. I forgot the two. Um, there's a two in the bottom of this thing, and I forgot it. So this is actually a 2L right there. Okay. So let me just double check Go one more time. Three comes over. So we have three over two. The L goes down. So we got three over two, just like that. And so alpha, when you run those numbers, if we're going to get minus, those are your all minuses, by the way, 24.525 radians per second squared. Okay. All right. Now we can get the, um, the acceleration, okay, using our relationship between A and alpha. So A is going to be it's plus or minus alpha R for the instantaneous center. And so we got to say, well, what is, um, is it plus or is it minus? And so this direction here is negative and this alpha value would be negative also. So they are aligned. Okay. So I don't need to choose negative. I want to choose positive when I do that. And so I'm going to have positive and then my alpha. Uh oh, sorry guys. Let me move my head. So my uh, alpha was um, minus 24.525. And my R value there is 0. 0.3. Because I'm going to the center of mass, the center of mass of the object, okay? And then that means my A value, it becomes minus 7.3. Three, five, eight. Okay. So uh, it's moving pretty good. It's moving pretty good there. Okay. Okay. So now we can come back in here. We can use that number, our AT or AY, whatever we want to call it, the vertical component of A, um, just turns out to be MA plus MG. And when we run all the numbers on that, what you're going to find, okay, and make sure you do this yourself, is we get 29.43 for that thing, okay? All right, now, um, what do we do with trying to find a sub n, okay? Well, let's take a look. We'll use this equation down here. And so I've got a sub n here, and that's got to be equal to m a centripetal. All right, so we'd have one of those m omega squared r things going on. But the very moment at which it's released, it's not rotating at all. Not at all. And so that means this side over here is zero. Therefore, a sub n is zero. So there's no horizontal component to it. Okay. All 
Now, I want to do a little bonus thing for you because it's pretty cool. Well, we ended up having this result right here for alpha. Okay, so let's bring that over here. And up here, we had that A is equal to that stuff. So let's bring that in here too and say that A is equal to alpha times R. But what we had for alpha was we had minus 3 over 2L times G. And the value of R is actually L over 2. And so the length of the thing doesn't matter. Look at that. The length cancels out. And we get the acceleration is minus 3 fourths G. How cool is that? And if you'd run those that number, uh, 3 quarters of G, you're going to get our value there, 7.358. Okay. Um, kind of fun. We could explore that a little bit more, you know, like we did with beta. If we wanted to set up some kind of beta where the moment of inertia for any generic object is beta, beta m r squared, and, and then see what that does for our acceleration. That might be fun to try sometime, but well, we won't do it for now. But I did want you to see that in the end, the actual acceleration, uh, translational acceleration is actually independent of the length of the rod. It doesn't matter how long the rod is, the center of mass is always going to have that acceleration right there. Okay. Alrighty. That's it.